Ladies and gentlemen, I hope all is blessed today. I want to please introduce you to my great friend, a content creator, a journalist, and the queen of resilience. Ladies and gentlemen, please show some love for Shanika Taylor. I love that. I love your introduction. Come on, Steve Harvey. On. <laughs> Listen, man, we get in there day by day. The queen of resilience. I done got a new title, y'all. I'm Add feeling that. that. Add that to your Instagram. Put that right there. <laughs> yes, I think, I think, you know, by Kofi, queen of resilience. <laughs> You are you earn that title, man. You earn that title. It's an inspiration Appreciate that we'll 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 dive into. No problem. That we'll dive into a little bit today. Um, how are you doing, man? I'm happy. I am blessed. God has been great. He has been good. Mm -hmm. Um, everything. You know, I think I've learned so much over this course of the pandemic that. I, I'm just a brand new person, so I'm just grateful mm -hmm. to still be alive, to breathe, to be able to share and fellowship with, you know, young brothers like yourself. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have really nothing to complain about. And if anything is in my way, I know that God's going to take care of it and handle it. So that's Ooh. the mentality I got. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. And, and you know that God is going to handle it all. Um, when did you first meet God? Like, when was your first encounter with religion? Um, well, shout out to my parents. They did such a good job. Um, mm -hmm. They are the ones who actually introduced me to God. I grew up in a very, very conservative family, mm -hmm. raised in the church. And when I say raised in the church, I mean, my mom was the church clerk, okay? <laughs> Wednesday night, wow. me and I was there. Um, early morning prayer service before the pastor gets there. I was there. So mm -hmm. I was nothing but church, you know? Um, I wasn't even allowed to even go over my friend's house growing up in high school because my parents didn't believe that I was going to a spiritual household. So when it comes down to church, although my dad isn't a pastor, I was one of those kids, always in the church, couldn't mm -hmm. talk because my mom would have gave me that look, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> coming over because I didn't do what I was supposed to do while mm -hmm. I was sitting in that pew, that was bars. Um, I was <laughs> When it came down to church, you know, it has always been, it's been my foundation. Religion has mm -hmm. been my foundation. And it's probably the reason why I'm, I'm before, not probably, it is the reason why I'm before you today. Amen. Amen. Your mom was a church clerk. So you always knew how to count your blessings. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you really understood that. And it was always, religion was always around you through your family. Um, and the church was always surrounded by you. But just because Absolutely. we are surrounded by something doesn't mean we are necessarily in a relationship with it or that we put it at the highest, at the top of our value. And not saying that that is not the top of your value, but when do you feel like uh, you got into a relationship with God and uh, began to put that at the top list of your values? Um, you know, I've, I, you know that, that's a very, very great question. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've experienced God over my lifespan, starting yeah. the first time I was baptized at 11 um I was really into church um mm -hmm. morning announcements I was doing it um leading Love Sabbath it. school I, I was doing it all the church curriculum activities I was doing and then not only that I was putting on those leadership hats in church so mm -hmm. I felt like I was God's child at 11 mm -hmm. I, I felt you know what I'm saying and um I went ahead and I got baptized at 11. And of course, you know, the crybaby I am, the tears were rolling down my face, but I knew that God was in my life then. I, mm -hmm. I just knew it. Um, and then, you know, when you get older, it's crazy because, you know, the scripture train up a child the way they should go and they will never. Um, stay away. Yeah, stay away has been something for me because, you know, when you get older, you go out into college, you just start doing mm -hmm. your own thing. I was never out there. I was never out there type of chick, yeah. which is crazy because, you know, looking at my lifestyle, people would say, well, when she gets to college, she's going to be out there drinking just in the gutter because my parents were so sh strict. But yeah. I but I also knew who I was, so uh -huh. I never had to try to prove myself. So mm. I never went out there as a, as a child. I, I kind of stuck to what I believed in the principles and the foundations that my parents have paid for me. So mm -hmm. when I finally got out there and went off to college, it, you know... I can say that, you know, my worship wasn't the same because now you're doing your own thing and you're kind of distracted with your career and your friends and, yeah. you know, you got your mom telling you, get up because in my mm -hmm. house, we serve the Lord. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. So, but, you know, it's crazy because when you do hit those rocky moments and those hard moments mm -hmm. in life, 
that's the that's the he is the first person I call on is God. And I Amen. know that it was not only is because of the foundation that I that my parents have set for me is because I've had my own personal relationship with the father at 11. So I know that even if, you know, I haven't talked to him the way I'm supposed to talk to him or I haven't checked in the way I'm supposed to. I know that he's always there and he's forgiven and he's always going to answer. It ain't. <laughs> she was speaking facts, Pastor Taylor. She came to preach today, y'all. Um, hey, I told this man. <laughs> she told me she told wasn't coming man. to play. You know I like to talk and you know I love to preach. And she came swinging. Um, and I love that. You know, the thing that I do love and admire about you is that you, you don't go through the motions with anything that you do. You do. And that's a great um, asset to you because you don't go through the motions. So even when somebody is, you know, raising you in the word of God, it's not like you're just here like a lot of us were, which I can definitely say that I was just kind of like, OK, I should go to church because my parents are telling me to. You were actually saying, OK, why should I go to church? And you understood the emphasis of I mean, the, just the reasoning behind the belief and understood right. what you were learning and what you were taking in. So I definitely respect that. So continue to never go through the motions and always be in motion to, you know, digest everything that you need from your experiences. Right. Um, now, you, you spoke of hurdles and you spoke of tough times, which we all go through tough times um, as we come of age. Um, this we, we just went through this global pandemic. First off, how has this pandemic treated you? This pandemic first quarter, I'm not going to lie, I was sore. I was feeling myself. I was feeling yeah. good. You know what I'm saying? All the way um, up until October when my, when my series ended. And yeah. it took a toll on me mentally mm. um, because now you're losing a job mm. in the pandemic and no one's hiring like that because we're in a pandemic. So for the first time ever, I didn't have any source of income. Yeah. Um, and that's just not me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's just not how I operate. And right. that is very, very hard for me because everybody knows it takes money to make money. So here I am. I have this brand and I want to continue to move it forward and continue yeah. to push it. You know, can't stop, won't stop. But yes, yet, sir. There ain't no, there ain't no funds in coming. So I had nothing but to rely on the hope and the grace of my mm-hmm. God. And he needed that he needed to take me through that for a reason. And I'm going to tell you why. When we're mm. hustling, we get so caught up in doing things our way. It's yes. our our way and our time. So God had to slow me down and say, look, nothing moves without me. Um, and, and I understood that because he stretched the no income thing out. When I tell yes. you I was going on auditions like crazy and interviewing like crazy, I was. And for some mm-hmm. reason, why things just weren't sticking? Like they would stick every now and then, and I'd get like, you know, three hundred dollar gig here and a five hundred dollar yep. gig here. But that ain't nothing when you live up in LA. You got to keep mm-hmm. the rent and the water and the water on. That that That's don't mean nothing. We talking about just the air that I'm breathing. When you say mm-hmm. five hundred. That's what it costs to breathe in LA. Okay, <laughs> so so at this point, and, and you know, this time I'm like, God, like, is this it? And for yeah. that, that was my first time ever Question having that God. come moment um because i've always god has always gotten me through my hard times this is nothing yeah. different but yeah. this time was different because now you're not making money yeah. you get what i'm saying and you're in la by yourself and now the market where the industry that i'm in is closing mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. and it seemed like they were trying to sh- it, i know they weren't trying to shift me shift me out but that's what it seemed like in my head i'm being shifted out what I love to do so much. My mm-hmm. passion is everything. If I can't mm-hmm. wake up and walk in my purpose and my passion, I'm not living. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So when that moment hit for me and I was just like, wow, I came all the way out here to LA. I've been grinding. I've been striving. Yeah. I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Why, God? Why is this happening to me? Why me? I know you. And you know, I got kind of cocky on God. I'm mm-hmm. like, I know you more than these people out here. I serve you daily. I get up three in the morning just to talk to you. So why, why me? Um, and you know, God kind of was just like me because I need you to understand and learn that yo, nothing goes without me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I j- honestly, I just got the victory a week ago. That's why it's it's so funny just to be talking about this because mm-hmm. in the middle of me just breaking it down and crying. And, you know, one thing as Leos do, we hide so, you know, we mask a lot. 
When we, we show up to the scene, you would think nothing's wrong with us. That's just yep. how we move. Um, so you know, me breaking down and crying mid through, God was just like, yo, I'm gonna get you through this. Haven't I yes. not got you through this before? Yes. And I was just like, yo, you're right. So there's no more doubt, no more fear. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna trust everything on your time. When I tell you, you would have never knew I was broke during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean that. Money was, whether money was coming in from my sister, buying me groceries every now and then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, people, I don't, it, it was just crazy. It got, I was getting gifts. People didn't even know, like just sending me, just sending me things. And you know, yep. that's, that's not normal either. I'm an independent woman. People don't just send me things. But, <laughs> it, but that was God saying like, look, you don't have to have money in your pocket. That's not mm -hmm. what makes you rich. What makes you rich is that you know me. Nothing mm -hmm. moves without me. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the matter that I didn't have a source of income for five months and I I stayed afloat. Yep. I know that was nothing but the power of God, dog. Like no one can't tell me anything about the God I serve. And I say this to people daily. You cannot mm -hmm. tell me nothing. I don't know people who are able to survive in LA without an income five months. And you would have never thought, scratch the beat. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When I say I was a little homeless. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. You know what I'm saying? I didn't look like I was going through what I was going through. So he Correct. took me through the biggest storm of my life and I came out without even looking wet. That's only something that God can do. <laughs> that is only something God can do. So, like, so it's just, you know, I know that had I not had the foundation and the root of mm -hmm. religion and being mm -hmm. spiritual, mm -hmm. I would not be able to be before y'all today the mm -hmm. woman I am. It has been nothing but my hope and my trust and my love for God that has kept me here. Favor can take you places hustling can. Period. Favor is what enabled me to stay in LA afloat. I literally yes. moved without even having an income. Who does that? I moved. Yes. Without having an income. But you had faith. And favor. And Come this on. is why I tell people all the time it's important to have a connection with mm -hmm. God because mm -hmm. we think we're in control of this thing and we're yeah. not. He is. So when I tell you you literally can walk in a room and have nothing. You don't have to have the biggest house, no car, mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. money, but you mm -hmm. have the riches because you know who you're serving. Yeah. It, 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 to me, it, it, it gives me chills even when I talk about it because yeah. I know I have nothing, but he gave me everything. Mm -hmm. And if that makes any sense, with nothing, with God, you have everything. He's everything. the only resource for mm -hmm. me. The so. only source. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I I love that. Um. Wow. I mean, we we're gonna jump into the truth, the, our, our our truth and dare section in a bit. But I definitely have another question. Truth and dare. Um, truth and dare section. It's nothing. You know, we are. This is this is all, all pure. All I was about to say. I don't do good. Well, I don't do well. With you were there, saying because then I then I start you know I start panicking and start itching I'm sweating like wait what's going on? <laughs> now the questions might make you sweat a little bit, but you're gonna be good. Uh, <laughs> but what I do, <laughs> what I do, you gonna be alright though. Okay, what I do, we what good. I, we good, we good, we keep it clean over here. What I do want to ask you is, um, you 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 said nothing moves without God. Nothing moves without God. Nothing moves without God. You said that a few times, and then you spoke about being connected because. You can only know how to move with God if you are connected to God. Um, That's right. How do, how do you go about um, staying connected and stay staying with a listening ear? Um, I assure to address my father first. Um, mm -hmm. I switched my schedule around. When it got rough and tough for me, I knew right then I was just like, you need to tap into who you know. Yeah. Got the power to get you out. So mm -hmm. I switched I switched my schedule around to talk to him. Um, That's yeah. what keeps me connected. So I wake up. Everybody knows around three, four thirty. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't like getting up after five a.m. If, if mm -hmm. it's if it's, it's if, if I'm up later than five a.m., I already feel discombobulated. I'm running around like you know a chicken with my head cut off. I just yeah. don't know how to operate. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, God, I'm going to wake up early to talk to you, to worship you. You know, mm -hmm. so whether that's getting my scripture together, saying my prayers, and asking for His protection over my day. And also mm -hmm. asking that he allows me to carry myself in the way he would like me to carry myself. It mm -hmm. has gotten me a strong relationship with the father. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And even when I mess up because we're human and we fall yes. short, I 
to find yeah. myself now immediately saying, man, God, forgive me. I'm going to try to do better and act in a different manner the next mm -hmm. time a situation like this approaches myself. So I have like mm -hmm. literally grown. Um, so that's how I stay connected to the father. Sometimes you have to take the time out. It's just like if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, just like yeah. you have a significant other, you have to take the time out your day and plan so God knows that he is important to you. You know what I'm saying? How God going to even rock with you and you don't even make time for him? Why would he mm. want to rock with you? I'm mm -hmm. not rocking with nobody who can't make time for me because I'm precious. Correct. So you have to make time for me. Correct. You feel me? So I'm, I'm sure our creator is looking down like, look, I'm, I'm the reason why you breathe. Make time for me. So, Amen. you know, I, I've noticed that during the pandemic and I was like, you know what, God, you're right, man. You know what I'm saying? You have you have never left my side. You've always mm -hmm. had my back. You've been my number one supporter. You have been my resource. You've been my protector, my champion. I need to make time for you first because you have mm -hmm. always put me first. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, that's 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 how I stay connected to the father. I got it. I got a slot for him. He's in my day. Slot. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. got a slot for God. God is in your day. Yeah. That was that was perfect. And I think a lot of people do need to understand that, like, when you start your day with asking for guidance um, from God, you know, of course, asking for forgiveness, but asking for guidance from everything you're doing, whether it be career, relationship, um, family matters, whatever the case may be, when you ask for that guidance and you start your day, it just it just brings a little bit of, of a peace to you before you start your day with that right. anxiety. Um, and it just it just really does order your steps. Um, so it's really, really important. Um, we're going to step right here into the truth, uh, the truth and dare section. So the special thing is about uh, truth be told is we don't just ask you for, to say your truth, which you've been given to us this entire uh, segment, but then we're going to dare you based off of that truth. So okay, what's up? What's up? <laughs> she ready to rock. I love y'all. I swear I love your energy, right? <laughs> but um, so we're going to do the truth. So you, you spoke um, here about um living kind of like a guy living in your space um and sometimes we have like people that live in our space our mind rent free we have things that live in our mind rent free we have instances that have scarred us that we have said that we have forgiven but we have not actually Talk forgiven. About it. so Talk what about is it. one point in your life that or, or one one person place or thing in your life that you have never forgiven yourself for and why Wow, 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 why, why? We got to go there. A great question. Now you dig it, you dig <laughs> it. Um, dang. Um, sometimes, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm such a family oriented person. Mm -hmm. and and I do very well I'm self-sufficient very independent um and I do very well alone I'm not gonna lie you know what I'm yeah. saying I don't I, I do very well alone very very focused alone um it never gets to me but you know sometimes it gets lonely and I can mm -hmm. be vulnerable enough to say um so a lot of people you know they know if you know me you know I was in a very 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 long relationship Mm -hmm. um for nine years and I don't like to fail yeah um I always put my best foot forward so yeah. sometimes sometimes I think I'm over it now but yeah I've seen within the past two years that look back and I'm like you know be, I think because the situation didn't end out and um the marriage and the birds and the bees yeah. and our regular fairy tale stories that yeah. we're used to, especially coming from me because I come from a marital type of family. My parents are still married. My all my siblings are married. My cousins yeah. is married. My aunts and uncles are still married to this day. Like I yeah. have been super blessed when it comes down my family to my family tree and the dynamic of black couples, black love and marriage. Exactly. I'm not gonna lie. I, it's all around me, and I think because of that, it hits me the most because sometimes I feel like, dang, like. This is your last year in your 20s and you failed. You failed to invest in the right partner. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say I worry that um, it's never going to come because if it comes, it comes. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Right. But sometimes I look back on those years and 
it it feels like a failure to me because it was just a lot of time. And I'm like, I sometimes I don't know. You get back on out on this market, and these niggas is crazy now. You just Damn. look, and you're and at, the, at the age I'm at, you're just you're just like, what? I don't even know where to start building. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that when it comes down to that arena, in that yeah. area, the relationship, the love area. I don't even know where to start building. So sometimes I look at myself as like, dang, like you have failed as a woman. Um, Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of women are not going to admit that they feel that way. You get to Mm -hmm. a certain age and you see everyone getting buried around you. They have children. I don't have any kids. You know what I'm saying? But I love kids. Um, You just look at all of that. You're like, dang, God, like, I don't know where we going with this. Have I failed in that arena? And um, I'm over it now, but that that's one that's that's one thing I can honestly say. I had a rough time, um, and I say I'm over it, but I don't know if I'm really truly over it. Yeah. So I don't know if I've forgiven myself, saying that I'm not a failure. You know, you're not you yeah. didn't fail being a woman. It just wasn't meant to be. Yeah. Well, yep. I, I, I I'll start by saying you know thank you for being so vulnerable with me with us on this uh, platform. Um, thank you for, you know, sharing, sharing your truth. You could have picked anything, but you decided yeah. to share something that clearly means it's it, clearly it hits right here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So thank you for that. Um, but you know, next, you know, you, you, that's the queen of resilience. The queen of resilience never fails because you only fail when you stop trying. Um, and I, I don't see it as a failure. Just like, you know, I saw a meme the other day, which was saying, um, who said, if you don't, you know, get a successful career before the age of 30, um, that that's a failure. We, right. the social media and, you know, just the, the connection to media and things of that sort has really skewed our thought and skewed our mind to think that if we're not married before 30, it's a failure. If we're not successful, whatever success is is defined as we're a failure. Um, the truth is you're not settling. Um, the truth is that you are making sure that they, they, you see these crazy people um, the, 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 occur- the, the occurrences, yeah, you see these crazy people, the occurrences that have happened in your, you know, your relationship that was nine years, um, it, 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 it made you set up blocks and we just got to turn those blocks into boundaries. Um, and, and, and that's really what it comes down to because you just know now what you don't want and you yeah. know now how to move in the future. So I know that you know this, but I'm just saying it because you family. No, that, I'm, you I'm, know, thank you for the reassurance. Thank you no for the question. reassurance. No question that, you know, you go, you're, you're going to find the right person. The right person is going to find you. Um, it's just that, you know, we got to just, you know, we, we, we got to know where to look or we just got to allow God to order those steps as well. So, um, yeah. you know, that's I, what we I, have I, allowing God to do his thing because yeah. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, let God do his thing and just continue to like, I, I would tell you from this, like my, my fiance is definitely my best friend, but I to tell you now that I don't think that I approached it from the way that I should have approached it in the beginning. Whereas like, I didn't come to be her friend in the beginning. And I did, I never understood what people meant by that. You know, we built our friendship throughout our relationship, but there's something to say about being real genuine friends and getting to know somebody with, you know, without any, you know, relationship or whatever the case may be, you could feel for them, but get to know them as a person, know them in and out. Um, and then step into relationship or, or relations with them. Um, so I would just say, you know, those are steps that, you know, I have seen from, you know, my trajectory, but I'm blessed to be, you know, in my situation. But I would say definitely, you know, just be friends with people, you know, continue to be friends with people. Um, so basically and- what he's saying is pull your homeboys out the friend zone. Say, no, go ahead. <laughs> that, ain't, listen, that ain't what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just joking. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> She said, let's cut this, let's cut this series. Let's go quick. <laughs> Pulled him out the friend zone. Listen, that might be that. But uh maybe it's not. Maybe it's a new friend that you haven't met yet, or a new acquaintance that you haven't met yet, too. Or you know, might be the homie at the friend zone. We never know. But you just gotta make sure you know your friends more than your friends know you at, at times. Or you, you so you gotta make sure that this ain't the friend that that is uh, you know, this is a church segment. So uh this ain't the friend that's a bad example. Or this ain't a friend that is a friend of the culture or the streets. Uh, you got to make sure of that as well. <laughs> you know, I love thugs. It's like, you know, <laughs> she loves thugs. It's some good thugs out there. But uh, we're going to go ahead. <laughs> so just to end off the show, um, now this is part of the dare. So, you know, the truth is that, you know, you feel like you, you failed. But the truth is that you haven't failed. Um, the truth is, is that, you know, we want you to take the steps to be able to forgive yourself 
and forgive yes. those who hurt you. So the real work is going to begin when you work on yourself, then your world will fall into place as in relationships and everything else. So we want you to take the steps if, if you are down to accept this there to, you know, do the real work and whatever that may look like to you, if that looks like therapy, if that looks like, you know, reading scriptures in regards to relationships, whatever that may look yes. like doing the real work to, you know, really forgive yourself and be able to move forward in your life. And then the second That's part right. to that is to really forgive the people that induce the trauma because that may mean that you speak to them or that may mean that you forgive them spiritually for that because once you do that I guarantee you that you'll be able to move forward in your life so that's right do you take us up on that dare yep I'm gonna be on my hands and knees you know say pray to the Lord folks mm -hmm. watch your minds pray to the Lord um and yeah, I'm going to really dig deep because like I told you before, I don't know, I said I know where, but I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes mm -hmm. we be saying we be over stuff and then honestly, and then we look back down the line and be like, girl, you ain't even over it. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. So, so I'm trying to think like, I'm just going to keep it in my prayers so, so that I'm making sure that I do eventually if I'm not already to, you know, forgive myself, forgive mm. him and move forward. Amen. But I have Amen. moved forward. Let's be clear. You've moved forward. Oh, yeah. You definitely moved forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forward that has been moved. But I, I need to, I do need to forgive myself as a woman. Um, yes. I really do. You know, and I got to stop. I really have to stop. Mm -hmm. I got to stop. Sometimes I get kind of maniac with like, you know what I'm saying? You know, we got to check off of it. Yeah. And I'm like, I got to keep coming back to it. I'm like, God. Like, sometimes I even go, I'll be like, during the holidays, I'll be looking around like, what I'm really sure I'm really that aunt, and I never thought I would be that aunt. But to my nieces yeah. and nephews, I'm that aunt. I was too for the longest. I was, I was, long I was like, that aunt. No. <laughs> no, but yeah, I'm, I'm that one, so I'm accepting it too. Mm -hmm. But we'll just, I just want God to go ahead and add the rich part, and I, I, I will be happy. You already okay? rich. You, you I rich can't right be here. that aunt in Brooke. Okay, <laughs> it's that aunt with richness. <laughs> you crazy <laughs> so that i am rich but um oh, yeah, I, it's, a, it's a it's okay to have a checklist the issue occurs when we have a timer so you know yeah. and that, that's really what it comes down to man you can have a checklist have that checklist but don't have a timer on it and it's gonna come being impatient that's never got nothing there quicker okay and now yeah. you're talking you know what I'm but all right we're gonna wrap it up <laughs> We're going to wrap it up. Do you have any last words for the people or any thoughts on your experience with the show? Um, yes, man, this show is popping. It's been great. I'm I'm thankful for this conversation because immediately when we get up, I know I got to do some things and talk to God about. So, and not only that, I just want to encourage y'all, anybody who's listening to the sound of my voice, um, if it ever gets hard or you're in the middle of a trial or tribulation and, and it feels like you have no way out, you can always look up. He is mm -hmm. your way out. Trust me. Mm -hmm. A whole so bunch of quotables a day. Bars. Word for word. Bar for bar. But if y'all take that, make sure y'all give me my credit. Don't play. Oh no, we giving we giving all the credit to you, Ben and 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 Sha Sha no, said so Sha. Oh no 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 no, we 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 gonna add you on the social media. Don't worry, hey. <laughs> we ain't play it. But Sha, thank you so much for spending time with us today, and we hope you enjoyed your time on Truth Be Told. And we out. Hey.